Hi, my name is George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video I'll be going over Section 1.2 for my online elementary algebra class. As we go through, I'll be explaining some key terms and procedures, doing some examples, and trying to help you understand why things are the way they are. I believe that if you understand why, you have a much better chance of retaining and understanding this information. First topic in this section is about adding integers. If you have two integers that you want to add and they have the same sign, you simply add the absolute values of those integers and keep the signs. For instance, let's say we were trying to add negative 7 plus negative 9. Okay. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7 and the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. Because these have the same sign, we add the absolute value, which is 16, and then we keep the sign that the two share. So the sum is negative 16. By the way, I'm not really a big fan of these double signs. I tell my students in class to rewrite this problem as negative 7 minus 9. It can be done the same way. By the way, we already knew that if we added two positive numbers with the same sign, like 3 plus 5, we know that the sum is positive as well. If we add two integers that have different signs, we start by finding the difference between the absolute values of those integers, and then the sign of the sum is the same as the sign of the number that has the larger absolute value. A key idea here is that when the two numbers have the same sign, you find the sum. Same sum. When two numbers have different signs, you find the difference in the absolute value. Different difference. So let's start with, uh, let's try 14 plus negative 10. Here we have two integers with opposite signs. 14 is positive, while negative 10 is negative. The procedure is for us to go ahead and subtract the absolute values. The absolute value of 14 is 14. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. When we subtract those two, 14 minus 10 is 4. And then the sign of our answer is the same as the sign of the number that had the larger absolute value, which here was positive 14. Let me do one more example here. Let's try something like 7 plus negative 22. Again, the idea here, since we have a positive and a negative number, we find, want to find the difference between their absolute values, which is really a subtraction problem. The difference between 7 and 22 is 15. Now, as far as the sign of my result, the number with the larger absolute value was negative 22, so the sum is negative 15. Subtracting an integer, an integer is the same as adding its opposite. So, for example, let's say we had a problem like 9 minus negative 6. Subtracting an integer is the same as adding its opposite. The opposite of negative 6 is positive 6. So, 9 minus negative 6 is the same as 9 plus 6 which is 15. By the way, suppose you had the problem, uh, let's say 7 minus 2. This idea allows you to rewrite this problem as 7 plus negative 2. I'm not really sure that you'd want to do that though. It seems that 7 minus 2 is a lot easier to handle than 7 plus negative 2, which by the way, if you're checking your work at home, is 5. Okay, when it's time to multiply integers, you want to remember the following three statements. If you multiply two positive integers, the product is positive. If you multiply two negative integers, that product is also positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. Finally, if you multiply one positive number by one negative number, that product is going to be negative. So let's start off with why this is true. Um, and let's talk about um, why a positive times a negative is negative. Let's uh, do a little um, review. 3 times 5 is 15. Uh, we know that 2 times 5 
is 10. We know that 1 times 5 is 5, and we know that 0 times 5 is 0. Now, uh, there's a pattern going on here. As I drop that first factor by 1, the product is dropping by 5, and that same pattern happens all the way down the screen. So math is all about patterns, and we notice that if I drop this by uh, one more, this first number becomes a negative 1. Negative 1 times 5, if I drop the product by 5, 5 less than 0 is negative 5. So here we see that a negative number times a positive number will result in a negative number. Now this is the same as 1 times 5 with a negative sign added in front of it. Uh, negative 2 times 5 would be the same as 2 times 5 or 10, but it, the result would be negative, and so on and so on and so on. Now why is a negative times a negative a positive? Well, let's think of uh, this. Negative 3 times 2 we know is negative 6 by what we just showed. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 times 0, we know any number times 0 is 0. So look what's happened here. As I drop this second factor by 1, these products are actually getting bigger by 3. So if I drop the second factor by 1, negative 3 times negative 1, my result is supposed to be 3 larger. 3 larger than 0 is positive 3. So here I have a negative times a negative equaling a positive. Uh, negative 3 times negative 2 would be positive 6, and so on. Okay. Negative times positive is negative. Negative times negative is positive. Let's look at some examples really quickly. Um, 7 times negative 8, which could also be written as 7 parentheses negative 8. We multiply 7 times 8 first, which is 56, and then we figure out the sign. And because we have one negative number, we know the product will be negative. Negative 6 times negative 4, multiplying two negative numbers, the result is positive. 6 times 4 is 24, so our product is 24. Finally, if you run into a problem like this, negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 5 times negative 1 times negative 2. First thing we do is we figure out what sign our answer is going to be. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 negative signs. These two will produce a positive. These two will produce a positive. But there's an unmatched negative making my product negative. Then I just have to multiply the numbers from left to right. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 1 is 30. And 30 times 2 is 60. So this product is negative 60. The rules for dividing integers are the same as the rules for multiplication. If you have uh, one of your two integers negative and one of them positive, the quotient will be negative. But if they both have the same sign, either both positive or both negative, then your result will be positive. Okay. So if the integers have different signs, the quotient is negative. If they have the same sign, it's positive. So for instance, uh, negative 42 divided by 7 a negative divided by a positive, that's one negative number. That means our answer is going to be negative. 42 divided by 7 is 6, so that's negative 6. Uh, I'll try one more. Uh, negative 28 divided by negative 2, which, by the way, we could also write as negative 28 over negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is positive, and 28 divided by 2 is 14. So that's a positive 14. We can always check our division by multiplying backwards. 
For instance, the first problem we did, negative uh, 42 divided by 7, we said was negative 6. We can check by multiplying our quotient by our divisor. Negative 6 times 7, does that equal negative 42? It sure does, so we know that that division is correct. Uh, this leads me to a common problem with beginning algebra students, and that's division involving zero. Suppose I showed you these two problems, zero divided by five and five divided by zero. They look similar, the results are completely different. Um, students know that um, one of these is zero and one of them is undefined, and what they end up doing is they, they'll write zero for both or they'll write undefined for both. Um, one of these two is undefined and it's actually the five divided by zero. Uh, zero divided by five is zero because if we check our multiplication, does zero times five equal zero? Yes. Um, if we guess zero for this problem, which is wrong, when I go back to check the multiplication, is zero times zero equal to five? No. Zero times zero equals zero. I can't get back to five. So I know that this is wrong, and we say again that when we divide by zero, that the result is undefined. We don't have a definition for that operation. One important thing for students, be careful not to confuse the rules for addition and subtraction with the rules for multiplication and division. Um, if I'm multiplying two negative numbers, the result is positive. But if I'm adding two negative numbers, the result is negative. So two negatives don't always make a positive. It depends on the operation. Um, when I'm adding seven plus negative nine, the bigger, the number with the larger absolute value dictates the sign of my answer. But if I multiply seven times negative nine, it doesn't affect the sign at all, which one has a larger absolute value. So you want to make sure that you keep these two sets of rules distinct from one another. If you're in my online class, the suggested homework for this section is 1 through 8, those are the vocabulary problems, 9 through 69 every other odd, 71 to 81 odd, and 83 to 89 odd. For my students or really anybody else that's watching this online, uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you've got a request for a video that I can put together for you on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website. And the address there is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks for watching and good luck.